And welcome back to Career Build Series, episode 154. And so last episode, uh, did some more building on uh, Cormorant. Um, as much as I kind of want to get away from building, it's kind of nice to get it going just because I needed to um, need to finish the Cormorant, not finish, but get the Cormorant to a, a point where it was really running well so that I could um, go ahead and utilize it in the, uh, in the save world. And so I think it is about there. So what I'm going to do here is... I would like to get Triton going. And so I think what I want to do is I want to get Triton out in the world. And that way, if I want to do some building at some point, I can still do it in the test world, but we still have Triton out. So let's get Triton up. So last thing we did on Triton was pretty much the water suppression system, uh, the fire suppression and the, um, and the water cannons. And so I just have a little bit of micros here to hide. And then we'll be ready to rock and roll and get this moving. Um, and so, you know, that uh, getting the, the fire control systems in really helps with uh, making this a viable um, craft to use in the world for if we need to put out a fire or something, if we go and do a rescue with Triton itself. So I kind of, that was something I wanted to do just because that... Um, that gets us to that point. And uh, so that was good to get in. Um, you know, when you have a huge build like Triton, you know, a lot of people kind of joke about how everything's half finished in their uh, in their backlog. And the same thing's true with me. You know, it's it's a, uh, you know, you, you get bored with something or you just like it's too daunting and you decide you want to do something else. You feel like doing something else. And I often get that way. And so um, one of the ways to get it done is just keep picking at it. And so, you know, it was nice to... You know, especially some huge like Triton takes a ton of time. And so it was nice, you know, to get in there, get the fire systems in. And so especially, you know, playing it in the career build series, it really, you kind of, it gives you a reason to finish something. And it gives you a reason to finish a particular part of something. You know, for example, I wanted to be able to, you know, I'm like, oh, if we run across something on fire, you know, I have to go out with a fire extinguisher or with a hose to put it out. Well, now we can use Triton to put it out. And so that is definitely something cool, and it gives us a reason to do it. And so that is nice. Let me see if we get all these parts connected up here. So right under my bridge is where I have a ton of micros, so it's nice, convenient. A lot of the stuff that the microcontrollers runs run are right on the bridge. So that really helps with that. Um, let me see. I think we're pretty pretty good on this. Let me just make sure that there aren't, I'm trying to trying to keep it clean, and I have a ton of microcontrollers. I need to rebuild this at some point. Um, let me just make sure I have it saved. I think I do. I'm pretty sure I do. Um, yeah, right here. So I need to rebuild that at some point. So I don't need it right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete it off this off the deck here. I don't need it, and it's kind of in the way. And so as long as I have one saved, um, it needs some work anyway. Um, so I will work at it, work on it at some point, uh, make a little bit better um, container um, module, and that way I'll be all set. And so this also will get some some extra bodies off of Triton. All right, so I think Triton's ready. So I'm gonna launch Triton. I'm gonna load up Remora. I'm gonna load up um, the Cormorant. And then uh, I think we'll be ready to rocks and rolls. Um, that is the Cormorant's loader right there, so that's good to have. Yeah, we'll see how ugly this is when it spawns in. Eh, not bad. Uh, running pretty well. All right, good. So we need to move Triton off to be able to, um, you notice how those like to connect. Um, that's something I wish in the future you could um, essentially, kind of like with the rope logic, you say, hey, I want to connect my piston to the end there, and it will start with them spawned, connected. Um, I don't know if I like this coloring, but we'll see what's up with that. All right, so let's go down to engineering, um, and we will start the ship up. So I do like having to go down to engineering. One thought I had in this room was I thought about putting a wall here and then cutting this wall out and essentially increasing the space in the hangar. I'm not sure. I may just put a large door here and then the ability to drive vehicles in here as well. So I think that's probably what I want to do is put a large door in there and then I can do that. I think that's a better option. 
Well, we'll walk through the hangar here. We'll go ahead and first step is always master breaker. And then we'll go up here and we'll go ahead into the engineering control room, which of course needs a lot of love. And we will go port battery side. We're going to pick a side of uh, what we want for um, Harbor Gen. We're not going to do both. We could, but uh, kind of RP and how you do it IRL, just to have redundant systems, do a one. Fire, fire suppression system looks good in there. And so I'm just going to move this off, uh, let it sit. At some point, I need to put in a station keeping system. I'm trying to decide if I want to put in extra electric, electric um, uh, medium props, or not medium props, the azipod props, or... Um, or just, uh, you know, make it so that you have to keep the main engines on in order to station keep. I'll probably do it where you keep the main engines on. This has really good anchors, so theoretically you could just um, anchor if you needed to as well. A right, little bit of paint there from when I was screwing around with um, all of the uh, all of the piping for the... Uh, the fire cannons. Alright, so Triton is out. Let's uh, grab a quick snap. I keep forgetting to do snaps for some of these videos, and then I have to kind of... I don't like to do false advertising, and sometimes I end up with a picture that's actually not from that video, and I don't like that. At um, some point, I will tackle the smoke on Triton, but I've just yet to get to it. Um, again, it's not something that's necessary. I'm going to um, no clip, and the reason, again, is RP. You know, big ship is not run by one person. Uh, the ship is going to be run by multiple people. So when I when I do no clip, it's, you know, like even with Katie did where I'm, you know, you'd have somebody flying, you'd have somebody going down the rope. You wouldn't have um, somebody doing both. And so this, um, you know, this is kind of RP in that, that, you know, somebody's still on Triton and then somebody was still on the land and I'm now the guy on the land. So that's me changing characters. And so let me make sure that I don't have um, weather override should be off. I do like it that it goes to where it should be on on the weather um, when you shut the override off. So I override. I've been overriding the weather sometimes just because if it's too foggy, it makes it hard to watch the videos. So all right, so let's go master power and um, engine on. We're gonna go to about. Uh, we'll do 10% prop. Because I'm just taxiing. I'm going to turn the gyro on. Gyro help will help with um, keeping the um, keeping the pitch stable as we taxi in the water. And so that if we notice we have a fin underneath uh, in front of the tire there, that fin is actually what's um, steering us. The um, tail wheel does not steer us. And so the reason I'm using low low pitch on the prop, I'm not going all the way up to 28 is I don't want to have any chance of uh, moving faster than I want. This is taking a very small bite out of the air, so even at a high, um, even at a pretty high RPS, it's not going to allow me to go all that fast. Like, I'm I'm revved up probably 900. Yeah, almost 900. I can do that by sound. And uh, it lets me very carefully taxi, so I'm, I'm keeping a low prop pitch there. And so I'm going to bring it all the way to idle. And then I'm going to uh, start to decrease my prop back to zero, uh, just so we don't move around. Uh, and then I'm going to shut down. That's weird, the way that works. Very weird. Okay. Uh, it, still, it still allowed me to keep the engine on, even though I shut all the power off, but whatever. These little cutouts are cool. Uh, they make it easier to get on and off. All right, so let's get up in the crane. The, the module's already connected. Um, I really haven't put a micro on that module yet. But. So what had happened was, you know, I, I was kind of at one point I was complaining about the crane was acting wonky when I was loading containers. Somebody pointed out to me, they said, you know, oh, make sure your your physics is set to high. Well, I had assumed it was all it was on high because I always had it on high. Well, one of the updates put it on auto, and that was why the crane was not behaving itself. Was um, you know it went from high to auto, and I needed it on high to in order to operate properly. 
I wish you could hide these pipe connections, you know. All right, so let's go down here and let's try to grab this. Okay, out. Takes a little bit of looking to get your perception just right to, um, you know, it's hard to get the perception right, so you have to keep coming closer till you kind of perceive where it should be. So still, it's it's quite a bit further away than I think. There we are. And we're grabbed. All right, so I think this would be a better picture anyways of me. Fishing the old cormorant out of the out of the drinky poo. There we go. A little bit of a, a fog effect too is kind of cool. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and lift this up. As you can see, Triton has no problem. A little bit of a list, but the as you see, the um, the weights are automatically correcting that. So I'm gonna probably take a bunch of pictures of this. I just think it's super cool um, fishing my uh, fishing my little. A little sea plane out of the water here um, and putting it on top so also it gives me some teasers to send you guys okay and so uh, you know go ahead and put that right on the um, the deck so you can see all the lights came on you see the barricades are going down because we're over it so I can actually use this to kind of help me a little bit um, but this crane is very effective. It has a lot of, um, you know, it has a lot of, I can move it in a lot of different directions and dimensions, which really helps me um, align. So I'm kind of using the um, shape of the nose of the cormorant to kind of align. And you can see the grabbers are already trying to grab. So it needs to come towards me. My perception, I can't, the depth perception isn't great. So, uh, whoa, 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 don't crush it. Don't crush it there, guy. Hey, 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 man, guy little bit uh, it's very tight quarters I think I have it built within a block of where it needs to be so see the wheels I know that my connectors are behind the wheels so I'm kind of using the wheels and I have to touch them against the deck I'm very close now uh, to kind of tell where I am I have to be very close there we go all right so that is grabbed uh, so I was waiting for it to grab both. Now it has. Um, I haven't set this module up where I can disconnect it, I don't think. That's fine. I can manually disconnect it. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a pain, but let's see if I can manually disconnect it properly. Okay, I think that's far enough away it won't grab again. Cross our fingers, please. That's still annoying me there. I need to get rid of that micro. Okay, so this uh, is good, and then I'll pull the module off. So the cormorant is now on the deck, on the helipad. So that's super cool, man. I love having these these um, parasite craft on on uh, Triton. Just super cool to me. I think it's a uh, it's kind of a neat way to do it, you know. And um, you can see, you can very much tell that you know this was purpose built for this. You see the the uh, wings barely stick over the pad. Um, you know, when I show you on the helipad, it uh, you'll see. There we go. That's cranes back connected. Oh, excuse me, sir. Let me let me up, please. Ah, ah, keep falling. OSHA's gonna be very annoyed. Okay, let's go down. Of course, not realistic to break my ankle doing that sort of crap, but uh, whatever. So parkour, got to get that parkour life. And let's go ahead and let's hang this module up. And so I can just grab it, walk it in here. Of course, this would probably weigh hundreds of pounds, IRL, or 50s of kilograms. And uh, hang it up in there, and there we go. There's module storage in there. So very cool. Um, having a blast, you know, loading up my stuff. And, uh, you know, this was what... Career build series all about is getting a lot of craft in and playing and s playing with them, and so that's really cool. Have the old cormorant on there. So next, I'm gonna uh, switch characters again, and now we have our third character coming on here, and that's gonna be um, the Remora. Remora did a little bit of work um, off screen. Uh, maybe I did on screen. I can't even remember. Remora on the side, not as not perfect, but it's on there. That was uh, Mr. Uh, G's uh, notion to put it on the side, which was a good idea. Excuse me, why are you underwater? Are you alright there? Okay, I think it's fine. It's just 
Yeah, it's fine. It just I think I I launched it underwater and it took a second to come up. Okay. All right, and uh, yep, perfect. The light bar came up, as you can see. So that gives us a little bit of height. That's um, makes it look a little bit less bare and unfinished. I might do 45 pipes on the corners. That would be kind of cool, I think. I have to be careful with this thing. It's just so powerful that it, um, just so fast. Let's not say powerful. Power denotes that you know it's got a big old. It does have some big old nasty engines, but it's not as uh, you know, it's not like a Triton or anything. I'm just gonna back up just a hair. The thing with this is the power's not as granular as I like. I kind of don't have as as finessable um, uh, power as I would like on this. All right, so that should f did that not fold? That's gonna be a problem if this doesn't fold. Um, light bar is two. Okay. I need to be able to fold my light bar. That can't go on. Okay. Back to the workbench with you, sir. Need to fix the light bar or else you can't go on Triton. <laughs> Look at this thing. It just it moves like a stabbed rat. It really does. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Problem is you get too fast, I can't turn. You know, it was like I was saying with the with the cormorant. You know, it has a stability system. Oh, it has a stability. System. I almost hit the rocks there. It has a stability. That was that terrible guttural noise I made. It has a stability system that prevents it from going too fast when it's um. You know, when it's at high speed, it can't it can't oversteer you and do stupid stupid nonsense. All right, so this goes to those two go there, and then I thought I changed it. Maybe I didn't helm. Two. Okay, so zero is. You know what? I bet I don't have toggle on this on the helm. Yeah, it's toggle. Hmm. Two toggle. Let me make sure. Oh, I didn't connect it. No, I... Yeah, see, that's not connected. There we go. I I, I hooked it to um, something else. Ah, I shouldn't have spawned that. Let me save it. Okay, let's try it now. I keep spawning underwater. That's why it's swamped out when I start. All right. So, two. Uh, systems, two. Master power, systems, two. Two. Beautiful. All right, so we're in business now. We have a light bar that actually moves uh, the way it's supposed to. Well, as that Triton, I should have put the connection node because, the you know, when you drop this off the side... No. Probably start the engines, huh, man? Um, when you drop this off the side of Triton, you're going to leave the recovery system um, hanging off or sticking out. And then, uh, you know, when I first launch it, I always forget to put it out. So it makes it a little challenging for me to have to um, try to recover it if I don't do that first. Where it's very easy to recover it if I do it first. This has a good coast. It actually it actually uh, keeps its momentum reasonably, and so that really allows me to kind of get it in there. Not too bad. Up, oh, down, down. Come on, man. Let me control both. Oh my God. Q E. Thank you. Wow. Do it like five times. That's me just doing sticky fingers, essentially not getting it right. You get this. You actually get this issue in real, uh, real boats where the way that a lot of boats' transmissions work, um, you're essentially, you know, it's single gear. You're slipping into gear. Well, it has to match the RPMs before it can really, um, before it can go in. You know, uh, boats I've driven had this is issue where you uh, end up, um, where you know, it's it's almost feels like you have all power or no power. You know. So the dead zone in my controls is annoying. What is going on with this boat? Okay, there we go. Okay, so this is 
I'm just going to do asymmetrical thrust. I can get it more accurately in there if I do it this way. I'll start coming on reverse on the um, starboard side. I'm going to back it down. Hopefully you just grab it. Yeah, so see, I'm just doing my starboard uh, rear screw, which is going to hang up here. All right, let's do this. Uh, what I what I started to say in the beginning was if I should have had this out already, so let me just get it out there, and then once it's out, um, I can just come up and hook to it. I don't have to keep backing up, going forward, backing up, going forward. It's slow speed handling needs some work on, on Remora. You know, like Frigio, I you saw how I could really uh, very very precisely control it. This is being a little bit more uh, a little bit more challenging. Um, it just needs tuning, but I don't want to get into tuning right now. So All right, I'm going to come around. I'm just going to grab it again. That is probably too low, but because that would make make sense that I'm going to have to do this a fifth time. What I need to do is like my my steering is set up so that um, at, s at higher speeds I lose a lot of steering so that I'm not you know doing crazy maneuvers. But the issue is it um, you know it causes me to have uh, problems with um, steering at slow speeds because that's not tuned either. So see like having this already down makes a big difference. At least you know I also know where I need to be too. Like I don't know where I need to be sometimes. Okay, so that's pretty well set. Let me go. I didn't mean to fly. I just meant to jump, and I flew. There we go. Perfect. Um, and let's get the remora on. Remora's coming on. Okay, beautiful. So, um, of course, I clicked the wrong button. All right, so remora's good. This should be hidden at some point. Yeah, I, I actually, that looks pretty good, actually, the remora on the side. Um it was hard to see b the the bottom line because of the way the paint blocks are, uh, but that came out pretty well. I think fix the E a little bit. I like having gaps in the M and the R. And that should snap. Beautiful. All right, so we are loaded up with our toys. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to save this. And that will, um, in the event that something terrible happens, all right, so we are all set to go. Let's get moving here. Um, we're on time here. 22 minutes. That's not bad. All right. So most of um, Triton work has been systems. Most of the other stuff has been systems. Reason I've been putting so much focus into systems lately is that um, is that they're just so important to get us going and get us to the point where we're operating. So one thing I want to do too is I need to make a list is put a navigation station on here um, to do the finer tuning navigation stuff. So I'm kind of thinking what I want to do here. I would like to get down to the ring of fire. So of course I'm not going to make you guys watch me get all the way down there. Um, I'm trying to think how I want to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit I'm going to hit any rescue that I can on the way. So I think I'm going to go all the way to the south come across Ring of Fire. I think that's a good path. We've gone north before. Let's go all the way down here. So let's go straight down, come across here, um, and then we'll go to the Ring of Fire. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll program that in. I need to be careful um, using this system. I also can do a keypad. It's actually, you might have seen it when I was putting my microcontrollers down below. There's a keypad. I can use a keypad if I switch this from M to K that will let allow me to do keypad. Um, I kind of like doing this, but like with the Damon T800, it was a little tedious to do it um, for very long trips through the Arctic where I have to really, like this map is just low res, so it's tough with a low res map to see. Um, so it's better to kind of do it um, high res. All right, let's go ahead and turn the AP on. AP is on, so this light wasn't on, remember, one of the times I operated Triton that um, that it went in a direction that I didn't want it to go, that was because I didn't check to make sure this light was on. So that was uh, that was something to keep in mind. All right, let's do a little salute on the way out. Let's do cam. 
two. And uh, we'll do a salute on the way out. And we'll do a, a fire cannon salute on our way out of here. There we go. And we'll do a two cannon salute on the way out. All right, and let's just grab a pick of that. Not a very good pick, but um, fog's gonna make it tough, but it's kind of cool. So, water cans are working very well, um, working how I want. Let's set it. Let's configure our um, radar. We're currently set to. You know, we're set to essentially um, 100 meters. Let's get up to about, uh, we'll go way up there, about five uh, kilometers. All right, so that's up and running. We have the sonar going. Um, change the color of the sonar there. Um, change and lower the speed of the sonar. That's not my sonar. That's somebody else's. Um, we'll shut the um, shut this off. All right. Enough playing with water, but yeah, that's cool. So I'm trying to think what to do in these screens. Um, I haven't decided yet. Uh, what I might do is I might. This is uh, you're not off. Okay, so this, okay, it was off. I just turned it back on. This one I have to aim a little bit to the left of the buttons, I think, to get them to actually function. There we go. There we go. All right, so that's shut off now. Um, yeah, so we're up and running. This is working well. Um, if we remember, we have our panel back here. We have mast position, which is not working, so I think the electricity is screwed up. Also have our new ballast, so uh, standard is going to be a ballast line of desired water, water line, desired water line. Let's get a, let's go ahead and fix this. So we'll go to the drive for the uh, Triton. All right. And I'll kind of bring it up here and you guys can see it too of what I'm working on. So uh, let's see, bridge, um, let's see where are we at, engineering, service panel. Okay, so um, connect electricity to engineering panel. And Windows is doing that annoying sticky keys thing where it beeps at me for no particular reason. Oh, no, maybe it was actually the uh, radar. Let's check to see if it was the radar. See if we have a ping. Yeah, we, uh, do we? I don't know. I it was probably sticky keys, windows being annoying, but um, yep. So we need to connect electricity to the engineering panel. Uh, typo. Typo. Uh, water lie. Water lie. So that needs to be fixed. Okay, let's go back in. And so um, yeah, it's sticky keys. It's windows being obnoxious. Um, so that's my mass stuff there. Mass stowed, the mass position. That's because I don't have electricity where it's not showing. What is beeping? May no, it, it is radar. It's radar right here. I'm getting radar pings. Yeah, once I knew, once it was beep beep, I knew it was radar ping. Um, so we have, uh, you know, our desired water line. So essentially, if we look at the... Got to get in the seat to do it. I'm in slow-mo, so something's coming up that's big and annoying. Um, as you see, our, our altimeters there, which I'm actually going to hide those. They don't need to be sticking on the side of the boat. Um, if they looked like something realistic, I'd leave them, but they kind of look a little bit garish. So those altimeters are, are testing the water line. That's what's um, controlling our ballast. And so, you know, we have a couple gauges that show us our, our water line, port and uh, stern, Water line, or it's 
it's port bow, uh, port stern water line, which actually I'm going to change them. It will be port, port, starboard, starboard because of the way the panel's facing. And then, um, so that's just reading the numbers. So you see these, and then, so it controls the four tanks to keep the boat both balanced, uh, balanced in pitch and roll. And so the benefit of this is if I loaded something, say I loaded one container on this side, um, it would it would try to lift the bow up very gently. So it would add water to the um, port bow, and that would probably fix both um, roll and pitch. You know, so it would, it would automatically adjust the water for that. Like if you look at our our, water, our ballasts here, uh, why is starboard bow ballast zero? Hmm. So let's look at that. We'll put that on the list. Um, this is one of the reasons why it's nice to just kind of go through and check it. Um, star bow ballast reading zero, and the beeping is the um, is the radar. And so this is going to read uh, the quantities of the different tanks. I might just leave it because that's port port starboard starboard. Um, you know, it's not facing the direction of the ship, but it lines up to where it should be. So these are two tanks. This one's reading zero. I assume that's a bad sensor, not a um, an issue of water. And so we can actually have quite a bit of um, weight and balance on the ship, and it will pump enough water in there. You know, it can pump. You know, you look at this. It's um, that's not even full. That's around thirty thousand. That's around forty-two thousand. This one is full. Um, this one's probably full, but it's showing zero. So. You can see the differential. Uh, we can we hold a lot of water um, inside of here, and um, let's see what else. So you know these are all going to be this is going to be the whole engineering panel. So I want more detailed engine gauges. So at some point I'll probably lure them up, but um, and do some screens. But they start out with gauges, then I'll replace them. I'm not great with Lua, so it takes me a little while to get at it. Uh, I'll have all sorts of things. Fuel. Uh, probably fuel panel up above ballast because those are important. Those interact with one another. You know, as you as you use fuel, you want to replace water weight so that you don't get too high in the water. That causes instability, um, and so you want to keep your center of gravity low. So you want to take on water as you're losing fuel or using fuel. Def want to put def in here. Um, also, all of our electrical systems. So I need uh, port and starboard harbor generators. So a lot of this panel. Once it's completed, we'll get ported downstairs to the engineering panel. Will be identical, and so like I don't need mast down there. I don't need. I do need ballast down there. Um, at least readouts. I don't need controls. I just need readouts, and then so a lot of this. So pretty much all of this will be ported downstairs, and so that way I don't need to duplicate it. And so we have something showing two pings. That's five kilometers. That's quite a distance. We can't see five kilometers. It's kind of a cool thing that if you're at... Uh, I don't think I'm going full speed. I am going full speed. 18 knots. Um, there's something kind of cool is if you're... Like, say you're you're standing on the beach at sea level and you're six feet tall. I think you can see about six miles before the, before the horizon, the curvature of the Earth makes so you can't see beyond it. And, of course, the higher you get, the better, you, the further you can see. That's why you had crows nests and everything else like that you know why the bridges of ships are are up nice and high that allows you to see so let's go ahead and let's check our map um, we do have a mission um, I, we had a mission did it disappear oh it's hidden in here okay this is one of our bases actually Okay, so um, we could go do this. All right, so this is running. Let me just verify the course here. I think the cameras, I have two cameras running. That's kind of probably doing some slowdown on me. Um, and so let me just kind of quickly verify our route. I didn't really do too good of a job planning it, uh, making sure that we weren't going to hit anything. So I kind of want to do that. I don't want Triton hung up on a rock somewhere. Um you know, so we're missing that island. We're doing pretty well. And you can see, you can barely see our trend line. Like, if you look, there's a different color line right here. That's our trend line. That's actually where we're aimed. 
and that goes off into infinity. So, um, like if I zoom out a little bit, you'll see once we once we come up to my turn here, um, you'll see past some islands. See how this line keeps going? That's our trend line. That's showing where we're actually pointed. So now they're off our off behind us here. What is that? Oh, I think I see something. Uh, is that really? No, I don't. Th that could be reading the uh, oil platform, but I don't know. All right, so I'm trying to think how. I'm trying to think how to do this because I need to stop to run the Cormorant. How far is that? Yeah, see, I can't make that. Uh, I could probably make that maybe uh, with the Remora. I could make that with the... See, I made it this far. I made it down here and back with the Remora, but see, that's going to be an issue. Is fi I can't find the ship. It's, it's foggy. I really need to use the Cormorant. Again, I build the different builds to have different strengths and weaknesses, and so I can't really... Um, you know, I kind of have to use them to their own strengths. So let's go ahead and let's... Um, I'm trying to think of the best way to launch the Cormorant. I think I, I should be able to launch it while we're moving. It's I, I can't recover it when we're moving, but if I get close, I can no-clip switch characters because, it, you know, what I do is I'd radio ahead to the ship and say, you know, I need you to stop so that I so that we can reload the Cormorant. And so what um, what I might do is I left a screen in both Katie did and on the Cormorant. I am in big slow-mo right now. I don't know why. Very rarely do I get slow mo, but it's probably something with um, probably something with um, I don't know, maybe the screens or something. Let me see if I can't go to one of the screens that is less. I doubt it's the screens. I'm just a massive slowdown right now. Let me see. Let me see where we're at here. Physics is 34 frames. 34 frames. 32 frames, 60 frames. Maybe I'll kill that uh, radar, see if that helps. Kill the sonar. Sonar. 100% sonar. Okay, so the sonar was uh, was dragging me into the dirt, so that's fine. Ooh, hello. <laughs> uh, a little disco there. So that was just dragging me, so that's fine. Uh, sonar we're not going to use all the time anyways, you know. Um, probably we're getting into deep water and it's pinging way down. So I'm going to grab the Coomerant. Oh, uh, that's an issue. Okay, so I need to add something to the Coomerant. I don't have a disconnect button. Very interesting. What I'll do is I will add a... I'll add kind of a time disconnect on these so that I can disconnect it from the ship. Um... So this could be a little bit challenging. Let's try it out. I have a save, so if I if I end up breaking it, I can always uh, we can uh, try again next time and uh, and um, yeah. But let's go ahead and trundle this out. I like it how we kind of just like doop doop. Doo. There we go. All right, so let's grab this. Let's um let's let's go ahead and we'll use the crane. We'll hang this over the side. What I should have is the ability to drop it. I haven't. Uh, set up that module yet to operate that way, so I need to do that. But let's go ahead and let's grab the Cormorant. I'm going to kind of just put, hang it over the side, drop it. Um, and then I will um, just kind of probably no clip over there and get to it. Um, again, RPing it as, you know, this is a big ship. It's going to have multiple people on board. It's not going to just have little old me. And so because it is just little old me, um, you know, I need to no clip to switch characters. And that's just me switching characters. So imagine if there was a static NPC character on the boat that would just stand there and act like an NPC character. And you could teleport from character to character. That's kind of what I'm RPing this as, is me going to be different characters. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Learn to control your own crane there, guy. And, um... That is going to get you... There we go. So see, there's one great thing with these hard points. See how much I can abuse them? 
Um, I've talked about this before. If you have two immobile objects, that's when you get really bad physics problems in the game. That's when you get ships spinning and flipping and shooting off into space. That's why I like to use, if I'm using a connector, I want to use a hard point to pick something up because look at how much pressure I can put on that. All right, I can put a good deal of pressure on that and it has enough give that it's not causing me problems. If it was connectors and I put that much pressure on it, it would, you know, it would break something. Okay, so see, oh, so I need more pressure on this. So see, they don't want to let go. Um, <laughs> that was an oversight on my part to not have, um, to not fix the connectors already. See if I can't put some more pressure. Let me do this. So hopefully I can get it to try to pull to the side enough that it misaligns it and I can get it out of there. Um, I'll just try some stuff and uh, throw it against the wall, see if it sticks. There we go. Look at that. Somebody <laughs> knows what they're doing. <laughs> and if you if you know who he is, let me know. Uh, all right. Why am I in here? Why am I in here? I can get on my crane from here. All right, so it's good to know the sonar is a leg machine. That's fine. Um, you know, just it's not something to have running in the background. It's something to have on now and again. All right, so we're going to put the old uh, the old cormorant. Wowza. So as you can see, because this has some um, some give, as I twist it, it's it's letting itself give, and that's why it's causing this to overswing. As I'm over controlling it, I'm I'm inducing the oscillation. They have something called PIO, pilot induced oscillation. I'm kind of doing something like that, where I'm putting in the oscillation, and then it takes some time for it to correct. All right, so let's go ahead, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this, and then I'm going to go ahead and. Um, Stow the crane, and then I'm going to no clip change characters. Ah! Wow, I can't believe I saved that. And then I'm going to, um, I'll go ahead and I will uh, no clip back on to the Cormorant. Of, of course, all of this RP'd as um, me switching characters. So that is kind of how I, that's how I've come to not only, you know, not mind no clipping but kind of you know come to appreciate it because you know I am by myself um, and it makes sense you know it makes sense to um, play as different characters and that's part of the fun is you know you know in real life you'd have a pilot on board and you'd have to call that pilot down and they go do their work and then you'd have people operating the crane who are probably different from the people who operate the ship and you know seeing I'm playing all those roles and that's one of the things that's fun is playing all the different roles um, instead of me, you know, running around like it's actually just me, it's actually more realistic for me to kind of teleport and switch to a different character. Okay. And so we're now at the Cormorant. We have Triton on the way. Um, you see the door is open, and it, um, hopefully it doesn't have any water in there. I don't know if that's hot bust. That's the issue, so let's see. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll mark this. Uh, where are we at? This we actually own this island, I think. We do. Okay, so let's go ahead and put in our waypoint now. We have a fully functioning autopilot, isn't that snazzy? All right, so gyro is on. Flaps are going to go to full. Um, we have no wind. Normally, we would want to take off into the wind, so we can take off anywhere we want. Weather is override. Weather's off. So yep, this is natural weather. I have override day on just because it's it's hard for people to see the videos, especially on mobile if. Um, if it's too dark, so I'm trying to do a one, a one tenth, where one out of every ten videos I'll do a night. I enjoy doing some night stuff. I'm kind of a vampire myself. I, I work nights, and I, um, I don't know why, why the sun exists. It's quite miserable, but, <laughs> but I, I'd prefer to be in the dark anyway. So um, flaps up, gear up, gear. I, did I take off with the gear down? That's not. That's ugly. That's why we were bouncing. Did you see all that bouncing? That was what that was. I was wondering what that was. All right, let's go set an altitude. Let's go to 500 feet. What kind of scud run? That is super low for IRL stuff, but um, autopilot's on. There we go. That's how I want it to run. Autopilot master. That's how it works in real life. Um, 
you know, for example, let me bring up the uh, flight control. What is it called? I'll just get it, and then I'll uh, I'll get it, and I'll remember probably FMS FMS flight management system. Uh, the FMS on the Embraer 145. Um, trying to get a pick that I can zoom on. Uh, so this is probably the best one here. And prob okay, so there's actually a reasonably zoomed picture that I don't have to zoom way in on. So if we look here, um, this is the um, FMS the flight uh, management system. Is it or is the mode control panel? I can't remember. So anyways, this is how you control your autopilot. Um, and so you have flight director. Flight director gives you these uh, these magenta bars there. That tells you where to control. So for example, this you notice th these two bars are on the flight director. That tells us we are where we uh, need to be. So that turns on the flight director. Um, this is, I believe, this here is, I'm not sure what that is. That could be course. No, that's course. I'm not sure, I can't remember what that is. Uh, so this is your uh, heading bug. So, for example, this is heading hold. So you would take this knob and you would spin it. And you zip it around and you have a heading bug. It's this um, this cyan bug here, this blue bug right there. You see it on both sides. That's your heading bug. And one neat thing is you see how it's off to the left of where the straight line is? Um, that's because the wind. The, you can tell the wind's coming from this side. So, um, neat, huh? And so, what you would do is you would spin your bug. So, say we were, we're currently going 353 and we were going to go 030. We'd spin the bug until it was on 030. And then when I press heading and it lights up green, it gets this little green dash, then the plane would turn to 030. All right? And you also need the um, autopilot master on. So, you have, where is autopilot master? AP master's right here. So, as you can see, the AP master's on. If I put that bug on green and on 030, it's not going to do anything unless the autopilot master is on. So you have autopilot master on, spin it, and then you would click that. So um, let me see. He's on. Okay, so see he's on nav. He's on nav mode. So they have their um, their course in their um, in their uh, FMS or whatever, and uh, so they have their course set in, and it's following nav. So that will go to the next waypoint, turn, go to the next waypoint, turn, go to the next waypoint. Approach arms it for to do an approach. Let me just uh, double check what I'm doing here. Okay, uh, one seven eight. So it has a big turn to make. Um, let me just check everything here. I'm gonna go ahead and put some more pitch in there. My prop just to slow down and get there. What are we talking? Okay, uh, we passed it already. All right, so I'm gonna stop talking for a second and uh, go land. Go down to 150 feet. So this is uh, currently put us in a hold, and which is good because I'm not paying attention. So it put us in a hold by itself. So I'm gonna go to back to 28 and a half, and I will um, slow down using my throttle. All right, so I, I can't see it yet, so I'm trying to descend. Um, we're in Fog City here. Okay, so there it is right there. All right, perfect. Um, so Autopilot Master's off. Now I have control, right? Remember, that's why, why I have an Autopilot Master in there. Ugh, that was an ugly landing. Ugly landing. I didn't do any flaps or anything. I kind of rushed it because I was um, talking instead of uh, flying. All right, so AP master's off. Gyro can stay on. I'm going to go ahead and start to throttle up. Go to third person so you guys can see it a little bit better. All right, so we'll just taxi in. I'm going to start bringing back my prop. I want to go a little bit slower. Um don't quite have as much steering as I'd like, but it's actually, you know, it's probably pretty realistic. Um, you know, they have big rudders on the um, on the Republic CB, which is what this was inspired by. Um, you know, but uh, still, you're probably not going to be able to turn that fast. So I'm actually controlling it with prop now, mostly. Kind of set my throttle where I want it, and I'm just controlling prop. All right.
All right, so we'll just taxi in here. Uh, heading hold zero. This. Okay, so it was keeping my. Was it? Okay, um, I think I just didn't reset my my uh, ailerons. They were kind of turned. Definitely nice being able to put this in reverse because I. Um, You know, I can go straight up a hit against something. And, uh, like, I could stop this on a dime. You see, as soon as I went low on prop, it uh, pretty much quickly, very quickly did that. Let me do it. Okay, so the door is still electrified when I shut all the power off, so that should hopefully let my uh, anti-flood system work. And if I grab the fire extinguisher, we own this place. I could launch a fire extinguisher, but I'll bring the one we have inside. Okay. There we go. And so I can leave this door open because the nanny system will shut it for us, um, which is convenient. And I'll go through that, um, through the uh, autopilot system on the uh, Embraer, um, you know, after I get this fire put out. All right, this actually turned into kind of a burner of a fire here. It's been, it's been going for a little while. I think it started back when we were um, loading up Triton, so been a little time since this was going so I own this place too so I don't want it to burn down kind of annoying when your place burns down I have to pay the insurance premium that's kind of cool it seems like they uh, you know, there was an issue where you used to not be able to put the fires out, and uh, they fixed it, and it looks like they made it so that you have a little bit wider range. Do I have to rescue you? No, I don't think I do. Uh, two. I do have to take two. Where is? Where are your peeps there, son? Where are your peeps hiding at? You hiding people on me? Are they in here somewhere? Are they hide in the bathroom? They must be. Hey, how I? uh When you come with... Uh, are you going to look at the wall or are you going to come with me, sir? Excuse me. Let's, yeah, there you go. Hey, hey, hey. Put the TV back where you found it. Put the TV back where you found it. There. Not so close. Personal space, sir. Personal space, sir. Find you in my personal space. And do a 360 no scope off of this sucker and get on in. Oh, very much in my space again. Very much in my personal space again. All right, you, chair. You, extinguisher place. You, hello. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can... Oh, <laughs> I was going to be uh, cheeky and try to do it without getting out, but I have to get out. Okay, put you over there. Uh, nobody's riding up front with me because I don't want anyone getting handsy with the controls. So let's see... Um, where to, where to, where to? Military base it is, um, right here. Wind has been calm, we're going to head there. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll put that new waypoint in. We'll go ahead and we will start up. Go ahead and we'll stick our prop in reverse. And we'll reverse out. And wind is calm. Again, wind calm, you can uh, take off any direction you want. If you have wind, you want to take off into the wind. Uh, I really, at some point, I want to convert this to a twin engine. So I, I st think I talked, start, started to talk about this in one video, but I got distracted. That uh, doesn't seem right. Doesn't mean you're getting distracted. But um, what I was talking about was the um, what I was talking about was usually when you have a twin engine airplane, um, it's not as uh, the engines are not as powerful as the single engine. Uh, you have two of them, so you know you add them together, they tend to be more powerful. But um, you know, so for example, the CB, the single engine version, has a 215 uh, horsepower engine, and then um, it has a 215 horsepower engine, and then the twin engine has two 180s. So uh, let's go 500 feet at least. All right, so we're going to be there in four minutes. So I have four minutes to... Okay, so see, again, we're wallowing. We're wallowing because we do not have enough aileron to control because with the flapper-ons, 
some of my aileron is being used as flaps. And so that's causing me to have um, less control surface. So the PID needs to do more work. It needs to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth more because it doesn't have enough uh, control surface. All right, so here we go. Uh, three and a half minutes to talk about what I was talking about last time. So let's go ahead and finish this up uh, really quick. Uh, okay, so again, you have your nav there. That's following the waypoint systems that he set in. Uh, you have approach. So if you do uh, instrument approach, that will automatically capture the approach, go down. Uh, what is that? I cannot read that. I cannot remember it. Um, so here you have autopilot master. You notice the arrow is pointing to the left. This is telling, saying what pilot is flying. So currently the captain on the left side is flying. Uh, we used to switch legs. So you click this button, then the arrow would point the other way, and then the FO would fly that leg. Yaw damper, um, it, it um, dampens the yaw forces, so it's like a little um, pit or gyro for the that. And then you have speed. Um, this is not um, auto throttles. This is actually how you climb. We never climbed in speed mode. So you'd set the speed of, say, 200, and you'd climb and maintain 200. That was nonsense. We never did that. Flight level change we call flitch. Flitch is miserable. We hated flitch. We never used flitch. Uh, flight level change works like a PID that you don't set a proper... So it works like some people who make um, airplane autopilots, how their um, altitude holds work, is it goes up and it screams up at a huge vertical uh, vertical speed rate, and then it, it crashes down really quick and it tries to grab it super fast, and it misses it, then it goes under, then it goes over, then it goes under, and then it goes over. And that should sound familiar with PIDs, right? The better way is vertical speed mode. Uh, vertical speed, you'd set, I want to I want to climb at 1,000 feet per minute. I want to descend at 1,000 feet per minute. So when I was talking about the autopilot last time, that's how I have it set up. It's essentially set up like flitch, and then it feeds it through a vertical speed mode. So that smooths it out. So it works well. So again, I'm taking real, real world things to make it work better. Uh, minute 62, let's descend down to um, 250. It's foggy, so I need to get down so I can see. All right, um, real quick, let's finish up this panel, and then I'll get off of that. Uh, over here, you have altitude hold. Uh, you'd spin up the altitude you want, so they have their altitude set to uh, flight level 360. Uh, I don't know why the altitude mode's not on. Interesting. That's flight director for the FO on this side. Um, course, you'd set your course in, so I think that's course. Yeah, that's course. So you can set independent courses, so you can each have a different course going, and then you could swap it if you need to. So that that was course, I remembered it correctly. All right, so enough with that for a little bit. Let's actually aviate, navigate, and communicate. So let's aviate first. So we're almost there. We need to slow down. Another way to slow down: flaps. Watch our auto, watch our altitude hole go nuts. One because uh, it can't keep our doesn't have enough aileron to do what it's trying to do. Uh, let's see if half flaps, if it, if it behaves itself better. Yeah, it still doesn't like it. Yeah, it still doesn't like it. Are we descending here? 250, 250. Let's go down 100 feet. Okay, where, where are we at here? We're close, close, close. I want to watch here and make sure I don't miss it. We should see it. Um, there it is right there. Yeah, see it's just coming in? Okay, so autopilot hold is coming off. Again, this is why I set this up. Gear. Um, I have to fly. I'm going to fly over. Oh, actually, I'm not. I can save this. Famous last words that pilots should never say is, I can save this. The proper words to say is, go around. But it's a game. I'm going to save it. <laughs> and as you can see, that's why we don't say save it, why we actually do a go around. So... Perfect example of me being a bonehead and doing exactly the opposite of what I said I should do. Yep, that's why we don't do it. Is um, that should have been a go around? I wasn't set up, and I tried to try to do it anyways. And you see the results. Um, so I'm actually kind of glad that happened. It's a good learning experience for me and for everyone else. Is that was a go around? Should have been a go around. And I bet you I know what it was. I bet I had the parking brake on. I guarantee I had the parking brake on. Where is it? Where is it? Ah, uh, it's on this roof now. I guarantee you this. Yep, 
Release parking brake is off. Parking brake is on. So as soon as I hit the ground, my brakes were locked up. It caused me to cartwheel. Yeah, if I could get out of this infernal contraption. Okay, so as you can see, uh, we had a little oopsie doopsie. And it was all my fault. It was exactly what I said, right? What I say, famous last words from a pilot. I can make this, or, you know, uh, or, you know, and the proper thing to say is go around. And I should have gone around, and I didn't. And so that's a very important lesson. And this is why, you know, it's a game. It's not a big deal, but, um, you know, that could have been the death of me. That's me having to friggin' fix this. Um, which I'm glad. It's a learning experience, you know, and you don't want to do that in real life for certain. You know, that's something I used to teach all my students when I was a flight instructor is if you have if you have a bad feeling, if you have any question, any doubt that your landing is gonna be is gonna be a good landing, go around. And I came in too fast, the weather's foggy. I could have easily gone straight down the runway, come back around, the wind's the wind is calm, come back, landed here. I could have checked everything right. I didn't have time to run a checklist. I need to uh, come up with a checklist. Um, but as you see, I destroyed my plane because of it. And I'm glad I did it because it uh, was a little learning experience that kind of um, hopefully I never do again. And hopefully, you know, and the saddest thing is I said I should go around. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, there's a lot of crashes IRL because people do that sort of stuff. Um, they, there's something in aviation called get there itis where you want to get there so bad you do something stupid like this. You know, you, you want to get there, you want to get there. Oh, weather's not great. I could go to an airport five miles away, and then I'd have to get a taxi. My car's at this airport, or, you know, my family's waiting to pick me up at this airport, and I kind of want to show them the plane, and it would be so cool to show them the plane. And so they land at an airport that they shouldn't land at because the weather's bad or it doesn't have an instrument approach, and they crash. And in this case, it was me and bad weather coming in too fast, talking to you guys, right? I just said aviate, navigate, communicate, right? That's aviate's fly, navigate is where am I? Communicate's the last thing, and I was doing probably communicate, navigate, aviate. I would say it was in that order, and it was completely wrong, and it resulted in the crashy poo. So glad it happened in game and not in real life. Um, real life, I don't screw around. I... Uh, you know, one of the things we used to do when we flew professionally was under 10,000 feet, you, you don't chit-chat. It's uh, called sterile cockpit. You only talk about the required legal items. And so that means you read a checklist. There's no, hey, how about that game last night? You can do that above 10,000 feet. Once you go below 10,000 feet, nope. It's quiet time. All right, so caused ourselves a little oopsie here. Um, but that's not a big deal. We have money. <laughs> we have four. Ooh, uh, yeah, Triton's out. I was going to say, ooh, we don't have enough money for Triton, but Triton is out. So we're going to buy this island. I needed to burn some cash, too, just because, um, yeah, I need to burn cash um, because I need to um, have a reason to make more cash, essentially. So let's... Uh, Let's grab the record. The record is not out yet. Uh, if you check, um, I put a bunch of stuff on the on the work on the uh, workshop. I put up Macar tractor, Macar uh, dump truck. I put up the um, high tip 45. I put up uh, the 39P, the Pintle trailer. Um, put up a bunch of stuff. So um, I still have yet to put this out though. All right, let's me. Uh, do a quick little build here, um, very quick. Uh, where's cable connector? Uh, cable. Cable. All right. All right. Um. And a Magol. I just had yet to put this on there. I wonder, I don't know how strong these are. I like them better probably than the big ones. I don't know. I don't know how well that works. Um, 
Okay, and then this goes to mag toggle. This will go to here. Okay, that's just grabbed there. I want this hook there now. And then all of this can go um, All right, and let's check to make sure they're all different. Um, I think I can grab the end of this. Let me check it. I was going to bring in the um, the pickup truck monster truck that I had, but um, should drag that fine. But um, can I grab this? Grab small. Okay, good. I can grab that. So that does it. All right, uh, and then make sure I can winch out my big winch. Um, Okay, main winch in. All right, so that's all I need. Um, let's get humming here. That's uh, in reference to the engine humming. Okay, so th that still needs to be fixed. Good to see things that I need fixing. All right, so never good when you need to bring out your record to <laughs> go get your airplane. Uh, but that, you know, fun learning experience. And, uh, you know, gives me an excuse to buy this by the base. But definitely a me problem, definitely a bad piloting experience, uh, you know. And part of it is, you know, I wasn't taking it seriously. It was a game. You know, and usually I don't do that. Usually I will, if it's, uh, it doesn't matter to me, I tend to take it as, try to take it as serious as possible, you know, unless I'm, you know, purposely screwing around. But, um, you know, kind of try to often, kind of RP it as realistic, you know, it's, um, but it was a good learning experience. It kind of, you know, told me to behave myself. Are you going to mag, are you going to toggle? Well, see, I don't know if that will toggle. I've never used those. Literally, that's the first time I've ever used that part. So people are probably screaming the whole time, don't use that part. Um, but let me see if it drags in. Again, r the funky thing, one reason I haven't um, released this is these friction pads have less friction than my tires because they're all x melts. You see I have, what was that? Uh, some of these are freewheeling, so I actually have four. Four, six, six, eight. I have eight tires with you know, copious amounts of friction uh, and grip, uh, and the actual friction pads don't. Okay, that's not going to grab, is it? It needs a light connector. Okay, I wasn't sure. Um, very quick. I kind of wanted it to work just because I hate these. I don't. I don't care for these magols all that much. Um, And let's just hook the logic back up. And there we go. All right, so we should be good here. I'll just quickly get going. I'll drag this out. Um, and we'll end the video there. Um, next, so what I'll do is I'll save um, up. And then the next one, we will go and take the newly repaired um, Cormorant. Or actually, we might launch Katie. Could launch Katie. Um, uh, yeah, we might launch Katie because that way I don't have to stop um, Triton. And we've played with the Cormorant a little bit. We've kind of haven't had a Katie mission. Yeah, so I'll launch Katie uh, for the next episode probably and go uh, find Triton. I really want to work. Uh, I'm trying not to do too many build videos in a row. I know it's kind of, you know, I, I like the build. I like building, but I don't like to do too many of them where it's kind of. You know, me back of the workbench, especially if it's if it's me doing a ton of logic. Like, I, you know, a lot of people appreciate it and, and like to watch it, but it's it's a lot of me saying, mm, um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I proof my videos after. I'm like, oh, my God, I say it. I'm a ton. And uh, so a big part of it is just me doing that sort of stuff, running around through uh, microcontrollers, where I think it's a little more fun to do some missions. But... Um, so what I might do is figure it out and then kind of show you what I do is, so the plan is this. I want to set up a system for my parasite craft, or at least some of my parasite craft. Some of them are going to be close um, dead reckoning craft where I have to actually, um, 
See, I wish you could do this like a connector where if it was connected and I grab it, it disconnects. Um, there we go. All right, so let's start dragging the sucker in. Uh, my brakes on, my brakes on. Because I, I drive properly. I don't want to get a picture of me dragging it, so you bastard. <laughs> Ugh. All right, we're gonna we're not gonna screw around here. Oh my god, dude, that is that is nonsense. How do you disconnect from the airplane, and you don't disconnect from the ground with the same magol? So apparently it wasn't that. It was what is up, man. Ah, it's underneath me. I didn't shut off the winch. I'm going to have problems here if I don't take care of this. Get up there. Get up there, son. Ugh. All right, so let's go grab this. I want to finish up the video. I'm just trying to get this done. Um, I do not know how that disconnected. You know, and then grabs to the ground like it's nothing. I have another way to drag this in if I need to. I'm trying not to have to... Oh. You aren't stuck under there. Where is the actual part? Where is the thing, man? Where are it? Where is it? Did it glitch underground? Ugh. It's not way over somewhere, is it? Oh, it is right here. It's right here. Okay. See, I wish you could grab this and have it auto disconnect. That would be helpful. All right, let's try to get. Um, Let's be smart about this. Um, I know that's a... Okay, let's... I guess we can't be smart about it. It won't let me jump up on the frickin' wing because I now don't have enough winch. Ugh, drive me nuts there, guy. Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, my dear God. Give me this thing. and Let me put it up here. Get him very All right, stop reeling, please. Very gently pull ahead. All right, let's take a picture. Um, I think this will be the best picture of me I'm trying to grab this bad John. All right, slow, slow, slow ahead. Slow, slow, slow ahead. Don't slam it. Just pull it gently. Am I still reeling? That's the benefit of having the light up as I can... I generally don't like to do too much therapy. See, uh... The Cormorant seems like it's a small plane. It is absolutely not. Look at how big it is compared to the Wrecker. Um, it, it, is, it is not a small plane. It's a big old plane. And so, um, you know, it's kind of what you have to do with the seats being three across. If you want a two-person cockpit, you know, you're talking about... Um, you know, seven across with one gap in between, and then you need to put walls, so you're talking nine across, you know, and then because this needs flotation, you know, it needs more width. All right. So a little bit of a whoopsie-daisy. Um, it was a great learning lesson, great learning experience. Um, you get stuck there, and I have to go hook you up again. Never going to forgive you, Cormorant. Um, it was a me problem, not a it problem. And so I definitely need to f oh, whoa, follow good aviation practices, aviate, navigate, communicate, don't, um, and go around. Go around is one of the things we teach students so early, is um, if you're in doubt in any way, shape, or form, go around. You know, um, you know, we didn't care if our students took 20 landings to get a safe landing, because I'd rather you do 20 landings than to get a safe landing than 19 and have a crash. You know, and so the same thing was, was there, is I had the fuel. There was no, oh, my God, get in gear. Um, getting annoyed. Why? Is my, is my keyboard acting up again? A game's frozen. Is it? I can't tell. No, nope. game's not frozen. It might be my key, okay, it's my keyboard again.
Yeah, it's it's my keyboard's acting up. I just, I'm just gonna buy a new keyboard. It's it's getting old. It's get, the uh, keyboard's getting old. Oh my god. Getting annoyed with this. I'll tell you that much. What is it even stuck on, man? I don't see it stuck on anything. It's just being absolutely. It's being super duper obnoxious. Like I can push it with my body. Why can a, a big old truck not f grab it and drag it in? I see. I'm, I'm struggling to push it here. It's just it's stu hung up on something. Something's probably glitched in there. Um, let's use power and uh, and just jam it in here. I need to get it close enough to the workbench that it does it. I know I'm kind of dragging on doing this, but can I don't want to leave it unfinished. The mission unfinished. And so it's also a lot quicker and easier and cheaper to not have to crash. Right. Oh my god, that F word magnet just hooked to the ground again. God damn. That is so obnoxious. It really is. It's it disconnects from this and then it grabs on the ground. Get in there. <laughs> I killed this too. <laughs> no, I didn't. I just... It has a bull bar on the front. It broke the bull bar and some of the bumper. See how much bumper this has? Oh my god. <laughs> this is turning into the absolute biggest cluster that I, in my life. That front wheel is not turning. <laughs> what is going on with my life? I'm gonna. I, I'm. I'm uh, gonna get this thing. I'm gonna get this thing in there. I will grab the biggest, most nasty vehicle that I have and smash it in there, before I give up on this sucker. It's annoying me that much at this point. Uh. Okay. I should do what I. Should do this. All right. Let's do it the right way. Um. I should have done this from the beginning, and I didn't. I'm gonna use the mags in the back. And I'm gonna pick it up the best I can. Um. Uh, supports, mag, mags. Okay, I'm going to back into it in third person so I can stop the insanity. And then I'm going to use it. I'm going to actually lift up the back mags. That will uh, let me on the tow bar. Um, somebody drove, um, drives uh, tow trucks and was telling me it's the tow bar. I wasn't sure what it was called. Makes sense. Um Kind of annoyed, you know. I never used magols before. I really kind of am anti-magol, um, and uh, one of the reasons was, you know, I I don't like the whole premise of them. But um, port side winch, driver side winch. I don't know what's going on here. Um, okay, those are independent. Let's just go up here like this. Okay. That's what I want to do. And then I want to get in here and drag it. This is what I should have done from the start. Um, I need to get the sucker close enough. See, I'm, I broke this this uh, turning axle up front. You can see it's all destroyed. That's why it's struggling to turn because one side's not is dragging and the other side's turning. All right, so... Let's go ahead and one last photo to commemorate my shame. Shame is how you learn, and I have a lot of shame going on here. All right, so I'm going to put this up right next to the... Let's try it here. About two seconds away from just being annoyed. Uh, let me grab this. Okay, let me see if I can't get it. Thank you. Oh, very, very thrilled with that. All right, so... Learned some important lessons that time. Somebody who was a commercial pilot should know, and I, and I said it. I said it on the way in. We should go around, and I said famous last words. I can I can fix this. The reason why we tell students when we're when we're uh, teaching them how to fly, no, don't try to fix it. 
you've you, subconsciously or consciously you've acknowledged as a problem something wrong with this picture and we talk about that you have a picture of what things should look like when they're right and when that picture looks wrong part part of your brain tells you something doesn't look right like you ever get that feeling that something just isn't right you know from my experience that's your brain is is reading the sub is reading the subtext and telling you something in this picture is not right and your you know, the conscious part of your brain isn't reading it yet and so the subconscious is telling you this is a bad situation get out of here man get out of here man you know you just you just look past the woods and you saw some eyes that you know from a predator and you go you, you didn't your conscious brain didn't acknowledge there's something in the bushes right here and you start getting the heebie-jeebies. Well, guess what? It's because you saw a pair of eyes here, but your conscious brain didn't see it. Well, the same thing happens. I was coming in, and the picture looked all wrong. I was too high. I was too fast. I wasn't set up. I didn't do my checklist. And it was because I was in the fog, and I didn't see it till the last second. What I should have done is gone straight past, gone by, and I should have gone through a checklist. So I'm going to write up a checklist, and I'm going to have a checklist, and so somebody, uh, I think it was Jersey, had a checklist on that screen. So I was talking about the multifunction screen that I want to make. And so one of the things is going to be a checklist. So I won't drone on. Uh, this one's gone on long enough. Um, I hope you enjoyed the episode. A good little learning experience at the end there. Glad we didn't die. Um, glad our, our rescues didn't die. Um, if you liked the video, please give it a like. If you um, have yet to subscribe and you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate everybody who's subscribed to me and shown support to my content. It really means a lot to me. And I will see you guys in the next one.